In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to take this HP Pavilion X360 14M convertible apart so the M2 hard drive can be upgraded and I can add a memory stick. So what tools do I consider necessary to do a good job working on a laptop? Well, the first thing I recommend is a magnetic project mat. And you can find these from many, many sellers. Uh, I mean, iFixit sells one, but as you can see, it's more expensive. But if I scroll down here, you can find them for under $10. And you'll use a dry erase marker. So you want this tool so you can mark, diagram where screws go. The other thing you want is a good laptop toolkit. Now, the, the, the Cadillac of toolkits, the Lexus, the best one you can get, is the iFixit. But this is expensive. But if you look, you can get many different good toolkits for quite a bit less money. And, of course, they're also available on Amazon. So get yourself a good toolkit for laptops, a magnetic map. And the third thing you need is the service manual for the laptop. So I've just gone to support.hp.com and the quickest way to get the service manual for your laptop is to put the serial number in to the search box and say submit and you can see I have an HP Pavilion X360 14M BA 114 DX and if I go to manuals right here I can download the maintenance and service guide and the nice thing about having that service guide is it shows you step by step how to work on it now I don't think I can show you the details of this service manual in this video because it says this document is intended for HP authorized service providers only. So I'm not going to be showing you this manual in the video directly. Let's get started. So I got everything I need. I've got the service manual. I have a dry erase board so I can mark where screws go and diagram things. And I have my iFixit toolkit, as well as my camera phone to take pictures. The first step is there's five screws to remove off the back cover so I can get the keyboard out. So three of the screws are exposed right here. The other three are under these rubber feet right here or under this little mylar cover. I'm going to use a plastic scribe to get the rubber feet off and the mylar cover I'm going to have to get a little bit medieval with with a pin knife. Now these screws fit well with this small Phillips head right here. I just tried the size and made sure I had a good fit and the back screws are actually a different size. I'll show you that. Now as I take these screws off I use my magnetic mat and my dry erase marker to draw a little diagram and put little X's where everything goes so I can make sure I get the right screw back in the right hole. Now to get the rubber feet off I'm going to use this plastic scribe and just work it under the rubber foot and pull it off. Now these are going to come off easier than when you do it for the first time because these have been off this laptop before so they come off pretty easy. Now there is one more screw hidden underneath this little mylar cover and it just would not budge with a plastic scribe so I had to actually use a pen knife and get a little bit medieval with it and this has been off before whoa there it goes and it's a little bit dented but now I have access to all three screws now the next thing you'll notice is if I use my screwdriver here I can feel that these screws are not fitting on this Phillips head very well. This Phillips head is the perfect size for the three screws I removed from the front, but it is the wrong size for these screws. And this Phillips head tip right here has a very good fit. So let me put this other one away. Need to stay organized here. Now I can remove these three screws and I'll have all the screws off the back and I can put them on my magnetic mat 
so I do not lose them. As you can see, I've got all the screws in the proper place and they will be oriented according to the laptop in this direction. Now I'm ready to proceed to the next step according to the manual, which is to push the keyboard and keyboard cover out from behind. So the manual says turn the laptop on its side and open it up and take a keyboard tool, which I'm gonna use a thin screwdriver here that can fit through and push on both sides here, down on the bottom, I'm gonna do the same thing. And what I've just done, let me bring this up, is I have released the keyboard and now I can continue to get all the snaps undone so I can begin to take the keyboard out. Now all the screws are out of the keyboard, so I'm gonna work my way down the side, unsnapping the snaps slowly, not forcing it, and if it really is sticking, I need to go back to my manual and see if I've missed a screw. Another thing that can help you is a plastic scribe because the plastic is softer than the plastic of most laptops and this case. I'm gonna work my way down the other side now. Keep working down gradually and slowly, not using too much force. This is coming out a little easier than you're probably gonna expect because this has been off before. And now I gotta work these bottom ones. Now I don't wanna lift it up because there's three cables. I don't wanna lift it up too high because there's three cables that need to be disconnected before this will come loose. That's the next step according to the service manual. All right, I have the keyboard lifted up. Let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see these cables. There's three of them right here and they are what we call zero insertion force. They have a little plastic flap right here that I have to flip up and then I can pull the cables out. Two of them are going in this direction and one of them's coming towards me. You can get at these with a plastic scribe or you can use your fingernail and just very gently flip it up and then pull the cable backwards. Now I've got one cable out. Let me get the second one. You wanna be very gentle because you don't wanna break those little flaps and they're gonna be quite a bit more of a fight coming out. So very gently, there we go, there's the third flap, pull it towards me. I've got the three cables disconnected, so now you can see I got my keyboard out. All right, the next step is to remove the battery. And the battery has one, two, three, four, five, six, and there's a seventh screw underneath this cable right here. So the first thing I've got to do is take this zero insertion force cable. I'm gonna take the little white flap here, and I've already loosened it, and take it up. And then this cable is glued down, so you're gonna to have to very carefully work it so you don't damage it, because otherwise you'll have to order this part from HP for just a little ribbon cable, which would be very annoying. Come on, baby. There we go. And then another zero insertion force lever. And then this audio cable from the motherboard to the audio controls, volume up, volume down, can come out. Now I'm gonna draw a little diagram on my mat where these seven screws go, and I'm gonna remove these seven screws. And I'm down to the last screw. My Phillips head has a good fit. It's nice that I have a magnetic tip on here so I'm not dropping screws everywhere. Now I can lift the battery up. And there's nothing really holding the battery down except for the screws. And if you look right here, this is the electrical connector to the motherboard that the battery connects to. And it's just these two screws that hold it down. But now that I got these seven screws out, I've got the battery out, I can move on to the next step. You can see I made myself a nice little diagram of where each one of those battery screws went because you gotta stay organized when you work on laptops. The next step according to the manual is to disconnect all these cables connected to the motherboard. So we have speaker cable, display cable, power button cable. Over here I have touch panel connector and right below that I have the two antenna for the wireless card. Then I have the power coming into the laptop 
and there's one I do not need to disconnect right here because I do not have a two and a half inch hard drive. So some of these are zip, some of these are connectors that just have to be eased back out. Like this one, I'm just gonna have to work on both sides and work it out gradually, little by little. And I'm just gonna use my plastic scribe and just keep working it side to side until it comes out. There we go. And this is a ZIF, so I'm just gonna carefully as I can, there we go, just got my fat finger in the way, lift that up, and now this display panel cable should come out. Here is another ZIF, little plastic door coming up. And then this little purple grab right here is just to help pull it out. Come on, baby. And it's not budging. I, this one just, even with the panel up, it doesn't want to come out. So I'm not going to force it on this end. I'm going to see if I can get the other end. Let me go get all these other cables and then I'll come back to this one. And I may be able to leave this one in place to be able to lift the motherboard up and turn it over so I can get at the M2 hard drive and the memory slots because I do not want to break that cable. All right, I was able to get the other end of the cable free. So now, even though this one does not want to come out, I will be able to get the motherboard out. And that is the next step. The next step is to remove the screws holding the motherboard in place. So we have 10 screws. Let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws. Now, I want to point something out to you. Right here in the middle top, there is no screw because that was one of the screws we took off the back case that went through the motherboard into the keyboard assembly. So that screw is a pretty long screw and it's this one right here, and it came in from below. So that's why it's very important to mark where the screws go, because I might be trying to put a screw back in that hole when no screw belongs there when I'm trying to put it back together. All right, I've got all the screws out of the system board. They're all the same size. I just made one mistake. I forgot to take the screw out for the wireless card underneath here. And when I started working the motherboard out on this side, the wireless card did pop free. So then I was able to unscrew the wireless card and continue on. But I did miss that one little step. One little detail here on the wireless card is you can see that this connector is for the white wire of the antenna and this connector is for the black. Now, both of the Wi-Fi antenna wires are black in color, but you see they've got a white sticker on one. And, let's see if we can get in here a little bit better. And a black sticker on the other. All right, I got the motherboard turned upside down underneath this piece of foil right here. As I peel it back is my M2 SSD. This is a small one. I'm going to replace it with a larger one. And underneath this piece of metal for, I think, radio frequency interference shielding is the memory stick. So I'm going to use my plastic scribe right here. I already took this piece of tape back and I'm going to pry this up and we can see I have my one eight gigabyte memory stick and I can add my other a crucial technology memory stick and I just need to make sure I have the notches lined up push that in make sure my tapes out of the way push it down I now have 16 gigabytes of RAM let's get this metal shield back in place make sure it's all the way down put the piece of tape back on it let's remove the M2 hard drive by removing the retaining screw and it pops up 
now I can lift the M2 hard drive out and get my much larger drive, one terabyte, and install it, push it down, grab my screw again, come on, should have had my screw on my screwdriver already, it would have looked much better, here we go, now I've done my upgrade, so now I have my new hard drive, 16 gigabytes of RAM, I'm ready to reverse the steps I just went through to reinstall the system board, hook up all the cables, hook the battery back up, and then put the keyboard back in and see if it works. Indeed, my HP Pavilion is working wonderfully with its one terabyte SSD and 16 gigabytes of RAM. If you enjoyed this video, well, you know what to do. All the YouTube creators nag you about it. But I would appreciate it. Thanks a lot.